everyone, this is Donna, Henry, and the kids of the Lubong Family Adventures. We are very excited because today we're finally doing the, the Tour! Tour. I know it's been a long time coming guys. To be honest with you, we've been wanting to do this video ever since we got the van. But Tony and I, we decided to hold off until we gain some experiences first so we can give you a better and more comprehensive review from owners like us. So we took it out on a couple of camping trips. Oh yes, we did. It was awesome and so much fun. This is what you've all been waiting for. So without further ado, let's, let's do, do it. it. The chassis is built on a 2021 Ram Pro Master 2500 with a 159 inch wheelbase. All the Ram Pro Master series are equipped with fuel efficient 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine with six speed automatic transmission. They come with 260 pound feet of torque and 280 horsepower. But if you were to ask me, I would want more horsepower than that. Your length of our camper van is only 19 feet 9 inches. In the world of Class Bs, a 19-footer is on the short side. Because of the short length, it's easy to maneuver on the road and we can fit in regular parking stalls. The exterior height of the van with the pop-up clothes is 8 feet and 11 inches. It'll fit some of the parking structure garages, but definitely not in your house garage. We were able to drive this through a McDonald's drive through no problems at all. But of course, you always have to pay attention with the maximum height posted. And the width of the van is 6 feet and 8 inches. For the maximum capacity of this van, it has a gross weight vehicle rating of 8,900 pounds. If you're not familiar with gross vehicle weight rating of a vehicle, or sometimes you see them posted as GVWR, it is the maximum operating weight specified by the manufacturer. Maximum operating weight means the weight of the vehicle when it is being driven on the road. And the weight includes the chassis, the body, the engine, all the fluids, all the accessories, all the occupants, and all the cargoes. The maximum cargo carrying capacity is 1,869. What does it mean? The cargo carrying capacity is the weight of everything that you take with you. It could be your bags, your camping gear, cooking equipment, bicycles, tools, anything that you bring into the van. The stock tires that came with the Winnebago Solis are the Nexen LT22575R16. It's an okay tire for me if you're always driving on the pavement. But if you're planning to take this van off-road or if you're always on a forest service road or maybe you wanted to take it on the snow, I'd probably recommend getting a more aggressive tire. You can get those uh, BFG KO2s or the Falcon Wild Peak All-Terrain tires. There's only one sliding door on the Solis, which is typical of the Class B RVs because on the other side, it has the bathroom and the cabinetries. So this sliding door is manually operated. That means no button inside the press to open and close it automatically. A lot of people prefer it this way because you know, less, less maintenance, less components to break. For us, we, we don't really care. I mean, it, it's easy to operate. The running board extends from the front passenger all the way to the main sliding door and it really makes it easier to get in and out of the cab. There are tie-outs on both ends of the running board and it makes it easier to use to secure your pets or your bikes. Our propane tank is installed underneath the van. It has a capacity of 25 pounds. And this one here with the yellow cap, this is the filler port. It's only a filler port. I, I wish there was an outgoing port too so I can use my barbecue grill if I wanted to. But that's okay, I think it's something that I can modify later on. 
this is where the sidewinder style drainage hose is stored. I wish it's on the other side because the drainage is on that side. This hitch here installed by Winnebago Solis is made by Curtis. It can tow up to a maximum of 3,500 pounds, which is also the maximum towing capacity of this van. I like this brand a lot because it is made in the USA. You can rest assured about the quality of this product. I love these huge mirrors that are installed on both passenger and the driver's side of the van. Look at this. This is huge, it's massive. When I'm on the driver's seat inside, it gives me a good view on both sides of the van. And this here is the fuel door. I love where this thing is located. It's right next to the driver's door. That means I don't have to go all the way to the back just to fill up the gas. The fuel tank capacity of this van is 24 gallons and it only requires 87 octane. These two vents are the exhaust for the Truma Combi Eco Heating System. And behind this door is the 5 gallon black tank or in our case, our cassette toilet. It's very convenient for us because we can dump its contents in any public restroom such as those in campgrounds or rest areas or even in our bathroom. This 20 gallon container is our holding tank for our gray water or wastewater coming out from our sink and our shower. Right next to it is the drainage port. It's very easy to operate. All you have to do is you go in on the other side of the van, get the hose like what Donna showed you earlier, connect it here, and then pull this lever. Once this lever is pulled, it'll open the gate inside and that will flush everything from this container out to the drainage port. This here is the 30 amp, 125 volts shoreline power inlet. It also comes with a power cord that I normally store in the back. I can hook this up to a 30 amp, a 25 amp, or a 15 amp outlet. Just recently, I was able to test this out in my, using my um, outlet in my garage. I used my 30 amp to a 15 amp adapter. It worked okay, didn't encounter any problems at all. This area back here becomes the annex of our camper van. There's a rod mounted on each door. So these two rods can be easily um, connected together. All you have to do is you just kind of push the two doors outward and you connect them this way. And then there's a curtain that goes over this and it can provide privacy that we need if we want to shower out here. There are also magnets that are provided um, that can turn the shower curtain or that curtain into an awning. So this area here really becomes the extension of the living area. You can just hang out here if you want. You can even take a nap. Just really another place for us to, to play with. Yeah, so as you guys noticed too, my arm is resting on one of the leaf tables which are installed on both doors. There's one here, another one here. The primary purpose of these leaf tables is for this bed extension. It's to support this bed extension. We're gonna show you when we get inside the van. There's no problem with storage back here. Mm -hmm. There's plenty, plenty of storage. There's just a lot, lot of space, a lot of space in the back. I mean, it just seems small. There's really a lot of storage. Like what you can see, I can fit two boxes um, filled with my tools and camping gears. And in that corner, I have more room to fit um, another another bag. Yeah. And you know, with these two boxes here, it, these are my essential uh, boxes or essential tools that I have there. Mm -hmm. I still have room. In the back, this is at least another two feet wide that I can use for um, gears and other bags. Between the back of this sofa bed and this screen door, I still have plenty of room here. 
Uh, I was thinking of rigging up something here in the back so I can mount my road bike or maybe a couple of road bikes, one on each side. So this is the um, Nautilus water management system. This is a great little unit that we love a lot. We like the location of it. These knobs, you can turn it in different directions to give us a uh, different functionality of this uh, unit. So normally we would um, leave this in a dry camping mode. You can uh, use this unit to fill the tank and also connect it to uh, city water, which means it is bypassing the tank. The water goes directly to the faucet. And there are two other modes, winterization and sanitation of the system. And on top here is the hot and cold water station. We love it here as well. Uh, we used it in one of our previous uh, camping trips. So basically, um, there's a connection here for your hose. We use it for um, showering here, outside here in the annex, and um, normally use it too for rinsing off your dirty items. Right next to the Nautilus water system is a quick port. With this quick port, we can charge a portable solar panel that will allow us to extend the charging capability of our own solar panels. Right here is the switch for the patio light located on the driver's side of the van. Another feature that we wanted to show you in this van are these two barn doors. This can swing fully to the side which is which makes it uh, very convenient for us when you're loading stuff because you know if you have it this way i mean this is this is in the way right if you don't have enough room on the side so i can swing it like this it's out of the way easy to load my stuff in the back i think we're done with the exterior right yep should we show them the inside of the van let's do it Welcome to our humble abode on the road. For the flooring, we have a honeycomb pattern vinyl material similar to what you find in high traffic areas like buses or trains it extends from here all the way to the back of the camper van it's very durable it's non-slip and it's very easy to clean any marks you just wipe off with wet cloth we also keep a brush and a dustpan in the in the van so that we can just keep the area or the space clean whenever there's a lot of dirt or leaves that we track in. This is our fridge that is a 12 volt compressor unit. It's made by Novacool. It uses very little energy similar to like a 40 watt light bulb. The fridge is not that is is not that large, but it does have a small freezer up here and three shelves. The shelves measure about 14 inches deep and it's enough space to put food for three to four people for about three to four days. This grill here on the bottom lifts up and I'm able to put half a gallon of milk in here or any long neck bottle that you want to take and uh, put inside the fridge. We like the location of the fridge being right inside the main door. As you can see, you don't need to come in all the way inside the van to store your things in here. It's very easy to load. Check this out guys, our van comes with a screen door by Rolef. It is handmade in Canada and it's custom designed for the Solis. It's rolled up when it's not being used. All you have to do is unroll it and there's zipper on each side to keep it in place. And what I like about it is that it has these magnetic strips on the side and it automatically closes the screen door whenever you go in and out. Above the fridge is the main switch for the entire coach. As you can see, it's uh, green right now. That means it's on. 
we like to um, leave the switch on 24 7 because we want the fridge to um, be running all the time we don't want to we don't want any uh, molds to form when this is off and uh, like Donna said earlier I mean this uses a very small amount of energy anyway so even if we uh, leave this on without charging the batteries it should it should only um, consume a you know small amount of power and uh, these two switches here are for the lights this left switch is for the patio light outside just right above the passenger door this switch is for the three LEDs on the hallway if I switch this on we get plenty of plenty of light for the whole coach I mean it's it's you know there are, those three LEDs are bright enough between these uh, two switches above the fridge are the 12 volt and USB outlets dual USB there's plenty of them around the van we even have one here by the loft there's no shortage of them our camper van has two seating areas the first one is right behind the driver's seat this here is a bench seat for two and for safety feature it has a three-point seat belt this is one of the primary reasons why we love the Solis. We wouldn't have gotten it if it weren't for these. We love this area because it's multi-purpose. Driver's seat and the passenger seat swivels around and we use this for our dining room and for lounge. And if you're really pushed, you can use this space also for sleeping. Henry was able to use a sleeping pad here when our parents were with us in one of our camping trips. The table swivels around and it's removable and it's stored behind these seats. We're sitting here just to show you guys how two adults fit in the space or how the space worked for us. What do you think of the seating? The seating? Uh, well, I mean this is comfortable for me. It's not too firm, just firm enough for my liking. I like it, um, you know, just a little bit of firmness for my seat. So I would say right now sitting here is comfortable. And with this uh, armrest here, uh, definitely, um, you know, add um, comfort mm -hmm. when you're sitting um, down here. But I wish this um, <coughs> bench reclines even just for, um, a little bit I mean right now it you know it, it there's um, a little bit of um, recline I mean it's it's angled it's not it's not really um, upright okay. um, that, that's why you know it's still comfortable sitting here but I, I wish that it can recline some more I mean it for me it's the same I wish this thing the back reclines a little bit more but it can't because the bathroom is right here right. but like what Henry said it's the the back is not completely upright there's a little bit of an angle mm -hmm. um, the seat itself is wide right. so it kinda, we have a lot of room yeah to wiggle around I mean this is a lot of room and to, the, the the bench itself is wide so and with a little bit of the angle here it kind of balances it out but for me talking about the cushion I think it's a little bit too firm for my liking mm. I haven't sat here on a on on you know mm, during our trips. road trip so I don't really know how it's gonna be but Carmela who sits here all the time after a while she starts to complain that the seat gets too firm so she has a cushion that she sits on just to give that extra softness and like the armrest over there there's also like a ledge here that i can use as an armrest you know to um put my arm on if i really want to mm -hmm. um and then the table swivels like carmela does she puts her feet up here to to make herself a little bit more comfortable Here's Carmela and Angelo. We got them to sit up here so you guys can see how the space works for two kids. As you can see, they're a little bit on the healthy side, but there's still plenty of space for both of them to be sitting up here. How tall are you, Carmela? Five, two and a half. What about you, Angelo? Four, nine. What do you think about this space? I like it a lot because it's very spacious and I like it when we get to go when we dine here and when we play games. What about you, Carmela? What do you think of the seats? It's comfortable, but I wish there was more padding and I could recline it. 
we, this is where Carmela sits while we're on the road. She likes to leave the table as is in place so that she can put some of her things and she puts her feet up on here so that she can get herself comfortable and she puts her head down for a nap on this table as well. All windows in our coach are sliding windows. You flip the lever up and just slide it open. There's also a mesh screen that com it comes with. You can leave it close or open, but for us, we like to keep it close at all times to keep the bugs out, but it gives us enough ventilation. All the windows come with a full zip blackout window treatment. It feels like a heavy, a heavy nylon material. Um, it's heavy duty, so it doesn't feel like it's gonna, it's gonna rip. When it's up like this, it gives us the privacy that we need at night and also it blocks out heat and cold. Over here is the control panel of our entire coach. Normally when I get inside the van, this is where I go to check for um, the status of our system. So I'm just gonna show you what we have here. I won't go too much into details. Let's start with the LCD uh, control for the Trumacomi ecosystem. This is basically where you control the gas furnace and the water heater. I mean, it's very intuitive, it's very easy to operate. Just push a button, you got those uh, selections there. It's like your thermostat at home, but it only controls the heating. And this one here is the panel to check the status of the propane gas, the battery, and the gray tank. So you just push the small buttons here. It'll tell you, our, right now, our, our LPG is two-thirds full. And then the battery is um, it's full. The solar panel helps our battery um, to be charged almost um, every time because it's always out in the sun. And then the gray tank right now, oh, okay. Our gray tank is full, that means I need to empty it out. Um, and then this switch here, it, it's a two-way switch. There's one switch here and another one in the back by the Nautilus um, system. So you just make sure that this light here, if you're not using the pump, is not on. So if you're, I mean, if you're not using it, just just turn it off. Just flip the switch. And this panel here is our is the status panel for the solar panel. With the push out a button, it will cycle through the available status of what's going on with the solar system. It gives you, um, you know, kilowatt per hour, the amperage, the voltage, and the temperature. I mean, this temperature is not the temperature inside the coach. This is the temperature of the two AGM batteries underneath the van. And, well, this switch here is um, for the LPG. Just flip it to turn it on. Again, make sure that this is always off if you're not using it. And this switch, um, I'm not sure if we're going to be using this a lot or ever. Maybe when we go to a um, you know, very cold climate because this switch is to heat up the um, gray tank when it's very cold outside. So unless we camp out you know, in a very cold place, we probably won't um, need to use this. And this one here is not a button. Even if I press it like that, it won't do anything. It's a temperature sensor for the um, eco combing system. We have a two burner propane stove with a push button ignition. It has enough room to fit an eight inch pan and a four quart saucepan to use simultaneously. It's very easy to clean. The grill lifts up and I can easily wipe off any spills or splatters on the stove. Underneath the stove is a pull-out countertop extension. I like it because it gives me extra workspace for when I'm cooking or when I need to wash the dishes and also when we're out here just playing with the with the kids. We also Henry also installed these magnets underneath the countertop this is where we keep our 
coffee mugs. So good job, husband. Kudos to you. The other mod is actually the first mod that he did in the van is install this um, paper towel holder. I love it because it keeps the paper towel securely in place. It's always available for us. It's not cluttering the counter space. There's plenty of storage. There's a big storage underneath the sink. A drawer where we kept where we keep our utensils. And there are cabinets all along the ceiling from the front of the coach all the way to the bank. This cabinet here is where we keep our provisions. We just bought a plate holder just to keep our plates and bowls organized. And what I like about these uh, cabinets are the slam latches. Look. And it, it securely shuts the door. Another thing that we like are these magnets that are attached to the ceiling. It keeps the doors up at all times. Look, hands-free. I can load everything that I need without me having to hold the door open. It's very handy and that's a good job by Winnebago and that's all for the cabinets up here. This is our sink and the size of it is fair enough for the size of the coach. I like how deep it is, about 6 inches deep. We also have a swan neck faucet. I absolutely love how high it is because it gives me plenty of space to wash big pans and pots. We also have a dish rack that Henry found on Amazon and we're, we're, when we're not using it, this is where we store it. It fits perfectly in the sink. It seems like it's custom made for the sink. Below the sink is the water circulation feature. I turned this knob to preheat and count 6 seconds. I don't know why 6 seconds but that's what the manufacturer says. And it dumps the cold water back into the tank. And when I turn the water faucet on, hot water immediately comes out. We love that because we don't waste water waiting for it to heat up. As you know, we only have limited supply. It's only like 20 gallons. So that, that one is very handy. Good job, Winnebago. Down here on the side is a glass tube that shows us the water level in our tank. There is a backlight that we can turn on so that it's easier for us to see how much water is in there. When it's halfway, I freak out. I bug Henry to come in, um, and have it filled up. This feature also doubles as a nightlight. We use it, but we don't leave it on at night because it gets too bright in here. This is the other seating area in our van. We chose the sofa bed style over the Murphy bed style because it gives us additional two seating. We took our parents in one of our camping trips and we were able to fit six people in the van. Really, there's enough room to fit another person here, but there are only two seat belts back here, one on each end. Even like four kids can sit back here. Henry's trying to figure out another way to put a lap belt in the middle. The bench seat is wide and the back is recline so when I'm sitting here I'm 5'4 my feet doesn't touch the floor if you're taller maybe then if you're sitting back leaning back you'd be able to touch the floor with your feet if you guys are wondering if there's enough room here in the back between the cabinet uh, there's actually plenty of um, leg room plenty of space for me I mean I can you know sit back and still be relaxed but um, the only um, complaint I have here is I cannot extend both of my legs out I can only extend one and if I am on the other side which is the um, uh, toilet it's the same leg room but like I said I can only extend um, one leg out like this which is it's still okay before I turn this sofa into a bed, look how comfortably I can lie down on this sofa. The bench is wide enough for me to lie on my back. Actually, I like lying down here for a quick nap. I'm going to show you how easy it is to convert the sofa into a bed. 
there are a couple of things that you have to make sure that you do first so if you have the seat belt buckles showing up here just push them um, yeah push them out of the way it'll just fall in the back you need to do this because if you try to pull the bed out it it won't um, lay flat fully and then um, you got to bring this in the front this is the extension of the bed that we were talking about earlier and there's a handle here down at the bottom it's connected to a latch that secures the sofa bed so you just pull it and then pull this up and forward and that is done you have your bed set up this bed extension So remember earlier when we were showing you the annex I mentioned these two leaf tables on the door so those leaf tables are to support this bed extension to give us more room for the bed when the sofa is turned into a bed it measures about 59 by 71 inches almost as big as a queen size and then the maximum weight limit on this is 450 pounds. Henry and I are under that and Angelo, he likes to jump in with us in the morning. There's a lot of support for the bed. Yeah, I, I actually love this bed a lot. I would even say that I sleep better on this bed than the one that we have at home. I don't know. Maybe I was just always tired from driving when I sleep on this bed but honestly I this bed is really uh, comfortable yep it's very comfortable no complaints I love it this is our bathroom it's insulated and there's a heater vent here making it cold weather ready we not only have a swiveling cassette toilet seat we also have a shower We've used this shower in our recent camping trips and we love it. Seriously, we have a full bath in this van. Having a cassette toilet is very convenient because we don't have to use a public restroom. Although, Henry has one rule. If you go number two, you have to empty it too. We have plenty of headspace and elbow room to shower, but if you want more room, you can always sit on the toilet seat and shower that way. The shower rod is removable. The shower curtain came with the van. And if, you, if we don't really want to use this space as a bathroom and want to use it as a closet or extra storage space, we can. There are ledges on the wall here and all we need are shelves to make it usable for a storage. Also, we have a mirror and that's a plus especially when you're on the road and you want to make yourself look presentable we have it it's covered mirror mirror on the wall who's the prettiest camper van of all Solace. okay guys this one is a bonus trick for solaces owners out there so when we got the van we were always struggling opening the bathroom door the way we'd open it, you know, first of all, of course, you have to unlock this. That's very easy. But we would open it this way, which is, you know, pretty normal, right? See how hard it is to open? That's because you have two magnets that are um, securing the door, one on top and one at the bottom. So we found out a way to open it very easily, and it was accidental too. So the way we would do it now is you reach in from the top, where the magnet is or just right here uh, on, in the middle of the door and kind of pull it that way look how easy it is to open it and one more tip for you guys <laughs> you have to make sure again make sure before driving off make sure this thing is locked yep we learned it the hard way the loft now and as you can see the three of us can fit up here 
this is where the kids sleep but I've slept up here with them once when our parents were with us the maximum weight capacity of this loft is 440 pounds welcome to our loft as you can see we have plenty of room this is where the kids sleep whenever we're on the road we have three windows up here one on each side and one at the front the one on the left here has a mesh window and the same thing as the one in the front we like to leave the one in the front open for ventilation and for stargazing right Carmela? the one here on the left it also has the zippered um, window treatment like the windows downstairs and it provides the the blackout for privacy and also you know if it gets cold we just zip this up the one here on the side doesn't have the mesh it just has a clear plastic and it's only for meant for um, picture window and for maybe like a source of light we're here in the cabin now to be honest with you guys I'm not really that thrilled to talk about the cabin I mean it's you know it's pretty basic straightforward yeah even the dashboard that came with the van there's nothing fancy to talk about mm -hmm. but you have to remember guys that this van was originally built and designed for commercial use yeah there aren't even any mirrors up here for both passenger and driver side no push buttons to make the seat recline or adjust it go forward and back there's a knob here that i turn to make my seat uh, recline both seats are bucket seats so for me i find them comfortable i can sit here for a long period of time without my butt getting numb and there's a lot of leg room in the front so i can stretch out yeah i find the seat uh, very comfortable for me as well i mean i can sit here you know drive for hours and you know i no complaints or whatsoever at all uh one more thing about the seat is the passenger seat does not come with an armrest mine as you can see it does yeah i don't it's not a big deal for me to not have the armrest but for those of you who are big on needing something to rest your arm on then that might be something that you need to get used to and the van came with a lot of cup holders but we still run out of cup holder spaces because Henry uses them for other stuff like his batteries or camera or chargers anything. yeah we we need to find a solution for that but one last thing though the radio the original radio that came with the van well here's the news it sucks <laughs> I mean it it didn't even come with and navigation. navigation come on guys it's 2020 you know you should have at least given us with a better better radio with mm -hmm. with a good nav so that's that's the first thing I had to ditch and replace it with a pioneer AV receiver so this is one of the things that I'm probably gonna review in one of our future videos Whew. man that's a lot but I think we pretty much covered everything in our van, right? Yep. We told you it's going to be a comprehensive review. But if you're still here and haven't fallen asleep, we hope that you enjoyed this video. If you still have any questions, make sure to comment them down below. My mom or dad will try to respond to them as quickly as possible. And please do us a favor to help our channel grow. Hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching. See you on our next adventure. Bye! Bye.